Now, we've been uh, talking a lot about the consumer over the past couple of days. We're now we're delighted to have with us Brent Burney. Brent is the president of Media Metrics Canada Comscore Inc. And Comscore, as many of you know, is the place to go for the latest facts and figures and trends in respect of online media consumption. He knows what's hot, he knows what's not, and he knows where the opportunities may lie. Let's give Brent a warm welcome. All right, uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, I hope that uh, you weren't out too late that what I'm about to go into in a, uh, a second year, lots of facts and figures, um, won't make you doze or uh, go reach for, uh, reach for something else to drink that's, that's strong. Um, when I started this uh, task, uh, and, and actually the idea of Naming it by a movie title was is kind of odd, or at least different for a research guy. Uh, really wanted to try to come to this conference this year with something different, uh, something that would be uh, really speak to the content people that are here, but also speak to uh, the reality of what's happening out there, and certainly in the context of of the overall theme of this conference, C cubed. Consumers have control. Yes, they absolutely do. And now they have control more than they ever had before. So I'm going to, uh, on, on the theme of consumers have control, try to give you a sense of, of what's happening from a content perspective, but also look into um, the actual platforms and what's happening. And as I started to get ready to do this, uh, I think it actually was one night at home, I was struck by a thought and tried to build this, what I'm going to talk to you about, from that thought. And that is, the world is actually now one big community. You heard uh, a few people and Robert talk about yesterday all the evidence of, of social and what it did in the, in the Middle East. Uh, there is lots of evidence that we, in fact, are... Uh, common and, and have common interests as it relates to content. I'm going to zero in on a couple of key ones, and key ones I'll explain why in a second, then talk about how content actually travels across geographies and technologies, and then hopefully leave you with some takeaways. Now, I've got three quick slides on who we are. Uh, over the past 24 hours, I've talked to some people, and when I say I'm with Comscore, they kind of glaze over and go, who? Um, and other people actually know who we are. So, Here's who we are. We are a public company, uh, you know, around 1,900 clients worldwide across a range of uh, advertisers, agencies, and publishers. Publishers meaning people who put content out there. 900, north of 900 employees. Uh, we measure 170 different countries uh, and actually report in 43 markets and have a local presence now through acquisition and organic growth in about 32 different countries. The key to how we measure on the one side, on the left-hand side of this chart, obviously panel. Panel is how you get measurement of people. So two million people under measurement and it allows us to do a whole bunch of different things in terms of understanding those people. Big breakthrough, which I'm happy to say was, was led here in Canada and on the theme of innovating in Canada and being leaders in Canada, the idea of bringing census measurement or tagging pages and bringing census together with panel to create what we call unified measurement, so the best of both. That was actually pioneered here and then went around the world. So we bring those two things together. That's how we get the numbers. We've now turned into this company, a company that does digital business analytics. So yes, it's all about measurement, which is at the top of the chart. Increasingly, it's about advertising measurement. So is this digital stuff working and how does it fit with offline media? How does it all work together? How does the creative work? How does it all make the consumer take action? Web analytics, an important part. Now the internal measurement, so not just uh, measurement of consumers. And then mobile, both from the inside, understanding networks and how, how they can perform, and also from the consumer side. And you're going to see some of that. So that's us. So here's what was. And I said this to somebody yesterday. A mere 10 years ago, this was it. Here's the computer, 
There's a web page. It's pretty static. There's no video. Social doesn't exist. It's pretty straightforward. And now, what is? The world is a heck of a lot more complex, it just in terms of devices, let alone the types of content, whether it be podcasts, streaming, the types of ways content can be put together. And it can be shared all over the place because of something called clouds, which is not about weather. It's about moving data around very simply. So today, we have a very different world. So if you doubt that consumers have taken control, please take nothing more away from this talk than this chart. They have taken control from gaming consoles to the handheld device. As I said, when I started to build this, I was really, I tried to come from this theme. The world is actually one big community. And I believe, for those of you in this room who produce content, and I agree with all the comments that have been made this morning about Canada leading and creates great content, then that should be an opportunity for us. So let me start with this. The world is converging online. So in two years, there's been an 18% increase in the number of unique people going online worldwide. This has been driven by Asia Pac and South America, specifically what we call the BRIC, and that's Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Vietnam alone has grown 117% in, in less than two years. So this thing ain't slowing down. It's still growing, and it's still moving forward. If you're thinking about Canada, we still are one of the highest penetrated countries in the world, sitting now uh, just almost, almost at 70%. Clearly, in terms of raw numbers, we're not the leader. That's impossible. Uh, there are other countries in this top 10 that would be well ahead of us in terms of raw numbers, but in terms of per capita penetration, we are right near the top. And I'll have you note that the U.S. is not in the top 10. This market is different. You can learn in this market, and that is important for your future and important for your growth. People are still becoming more engaged online. Yes, social is driving this, but there's other things driving this, and we'll talk about that. More people moving into the digital world. It is absolutely key in my mind, therefore, that you understand how people access content. More time, more pages. 21% in terms of time, 24% in terms of pages. It's still growing. Canada is at the top of that pile when we look at hours spent per visitor and we look at pages per visitor. Again, what a great incubator, what a great test market to learn how to do these things with care and caution and, and, and good business planning, absolutely. But this is the place to learn how to build the model What are the fastest growing content areas around the world? So this one made me chuckle a little bit when I saw it first. First of all, coupons. So you know that's obviously the Groupon, but there are uh, the Groupon phenomena, but there's also some sites in the Far East. Uh, I'll, I'll butcher the names, I'm sure, Lashu and Metuan.com, which are huge sites which are actually appealing to that growth in the Asia pack. Now, I'll point your attention to, to three. Politics is an interesting one. Uh, there's certainly been enough political action in the last year, and this will continue to be uh, a category where people look, to, uh, look for information. The ones I want you to think about and uh, pointing you to are community, community, beauty, fashion, style, community, food, and entertainment. And I'm going to come back to these because those are the two that I'm going to zero in on a little bit. If we look at time, the last chart was in terms of people. You still see services and coupons. You see entertainment again. You see uh, community, politics, and also career, career type sites. Now I'm going to pause here for a second because the point here is that content areas or communities, if you think about them that way, transcend geographic boundaries. So the community category, and I'm going to explain in a second what that is, reaches 70% of the global internet population. And you can see in some of the regions what those penetration levels are. 
and entertainment is up close to 90%. Social media, 87%. So yeah, social media is important, but it actually is no more important than entertainment as far as a category goes. Now, how it works virally and how people pass content around, that's a whole other uh, conversation and a whole other discussion. Retail is actually very big around the world, and news and information, which this country is very good at, is also a very strong category um, at 76%. I am just going to zero in, for purposes of my time with you today, on community and entertainment, largely because I see social as a catalyst of things. Uh, news and information, if you're in that business, you're in that business, but there's a lot of people in this room who are independent producers, who are smaller producers, and potentially could produce content in the community area. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So what is the power of content communities? This is the community category. And so the, what we call community, and the way we divide this up so we can make some sense of the content that's out there, is these, are these sites are geared towards a particular group of people with common interests and hobbies. In December, so just a couple months ago, more than a billion people, unduplicated people, visited content in the community category. And it broke down into the biggest ones were lifestyles, community food, beauty, fashion, style. So 37% reach at the top of the pile. You can see the numbers down. That's of all the people in the world. That is a pretty big number, and in fact, the top four, when you get down to family, family and parenting, are all up 20%, north of 20%. Only below that does it drop into the single digits. This is going to be an eye chart. I know it's going to be tough to see, but you'll get the point in a second. If you look at the top community properties worldwide, okay, worldwide, 14 of the top 15 are based in the U.S. They're based in North America. But look at their reach in other countries. So there's Canada in the middle of the pack at like 93%. This content is visited by global audiences. It is not just content that gets produced in that local country. So you can see some of the other countries, north of 90, up above 80%. Really surprising, the content drives the consumption. Entertainment. So in the entertainment category, another interesting phenomenon happens. So these are, the, these are the most popular content areas globally for entertainment. Now we're talking about 1.3 billion unique people in all the world in December, but look at the numbers. We're not in single digits anymore. Even when you get to kids' content at the bottom, it's still 12% of the people online in the world who pursue kids' entertainment content. Again, another eye chart, but the same similar point. 11 of 15 properties are US-based. The first one there is YouTube. The second one is Vivo. Then you got CBS Interactive. So content coming out of the US, but top on a worldwide basis. And as we saw, or as we heard just a minute ago, uh, content that Canadians can produce and put on YouTube. First, first feature film on YouTube, amazing. Absolutely terrific. But look at the global draw. That's, that's really my point on these two or four charts. This is north of 90% in every one of these countries, yet it's coming out of the United States. And there's no reason that, and we know that our content can roll in the United States just as easily, and in fact does. Stopping for a minute, and, and this is sort of one of those, uh, as a research guy, one of those maybe duh moments of, it is important to think about the audience. It is important to think about the consumption. Um, yesterday in the social session, and, and it was mentioned again this morning, thinking about do your research first. Yeah, no kidding. Um, like you really have to know that. 
That is the price of entry. And I'm here to tell you it's gotten more complex. It's more complex for us, and it's therefore more complex for you. This is a really simple chart on community. Quite frankly, it's a little bit more female, but not much, 52-49. If we, if we talk about Canada, there's nothing terribly exciting in the way, about the way it breaks down regionally. But if you look at the composition, it's the 35 to 49-year-olds who are driving the consumption. So 27% of the people who are reached, but more, a higher percentage, almost a third of the pages and the time driven by that group. So know your audience. Know who's driving it. Know who you're speaking to and know who you're building for. If we talk about entertainment, and I've, we've put in here three different pie charts on three different ways we look at entertainment. Music, multimedia, which is principally driven by YouTube, but not solely, and then TV, which is streaming TV. You can see it vacillates around the 50-50 mark, where on the left, it's, music is a little bit more male, and on the, on the far right, it's just a smidge more female when we talk about TV. But again, I point your attention to the people who are the age groups that are driving the volume. So it's, I've highlighted here the 18 to 34s, but it's also the younger folks, the 2 to 17s. So on the 18 to 34s, 26% of the people who are reached, but a full 10 to 11 percentage points higher in terms of the consumption. So these people are the ones and the, and the group below them that are actually consuming this content. Lest you think that online isn't driven by seasonality and that it's sort of this broad, wide open thing that, that uh, doesn't have, seasonality has no effect on, these charts were made uh, in the last quarter, for the last quarter of last year, so October, November, December uh, of last year, heading into the Christmas period. And again, it's really there as an illustration of even when you look at males and females of the same age, the preference of their categories, and you can see the, the number of retail categories on the female side as we headed into the Christmas per period, 100 would be average, so you've got you know, indexes of 152, 151 and, and down on the female side, and, and 141 and down. Very different preferences, although it was exactly the same time of the year, exactly the same age, male, female. That's really simple. Certainly there are ways you can layer on other things. Yesterday was talked about psychographics. A life stage is important. Demographics are simple, but you must understand this. You must. And then if you look at the bottom, 25 to 34 is a totally different group. It's a whole different range of categories. Same time of the year. The other thing you need to understand and, and need to be comfortable with is it's fluid. I talked at the beginning about cloud, and I've talked about, and you know, you've done it yourself. You can click on links, you move around, you start out one place, you end up somewhere else. A lot of times you wonder, how did I even get there? I started here, and now I'm over here, because you went from one place to another. This is just an example of, of the 46 hours online we spend per month in Canada. We are moving around. So if you start in entertainment, which is this powerful category, you may end up in community. You may end up in news and information. So visitors starting in one place, going to another place, either through friends telling them or they're just moving there uh, because of content. The community of content or people who want content, it actually travels across geography and across technology. Two charts here. So this is CBC. So it needs not to be thought of as one market. So this is CBC in the month of December, one month, the audience they drew outside of Canada. And the US is that top line at 1.6 million unique people. France, United Kingdom, Germany, all the way down through China, Brazil. And I know those numbers are small, but add them all up. That's probably close to 2 million, in fact it is, unique people outside of Canada consuming the content. And to be fair, an equal time, here's CTV. Same month, again, over a million unique people outside of Canada consuming their online content. Whether they're expats or people who just want the content and understand English and therefore are going to find it. They're going to find it 
online. And then came the second X. So that was all about the first X. The second X is this thing called video. Wow, this is an incredible phenomenon. It wasn't there, I mean, we ta I talked about 10 years ago, it wasn't barely even there five years ago online. If you look across any country, Canada is the one with the arrow. We are the leader in terms of videos per viewer. It's well over 300 videos a month. So let's see, 300 videos, 30 days, three plus something a day people are consuming. And a lot of time spent consuming that content. Other countries uh, also very strong, including the UK, but we're at the top of the heap. If you look at the rise of, of video content in Canada in the last year, the, the number, the raw number of videos has grown like 63%. Consumption accelerates. If we zero in a little bit on video, now we're talking about video, and we say, okay, um, in terms of video, what content are people pursuing? Probably no big surprise, the one at the top of the pile is entertainment. Big numbers. But services, social media, news and information, retail, people are really embracing video. And in fact, you know, you start thinking about it, and we certainly talk to a lot of clients about it, it's another screen. And I've heard that term used here a lot, and that's good. I love to hear you talk like that. It's all about screens. It's not about silos. It's about screens. It's not about digital. It's about screens and people consuming across all of them and, and how they can find content where they want it, when they want it, on the device they want it. A couple of charts on uh, components of, of entertainment. This is TV, so, you know, uh, right now, Germany is leading the pile in terms of 43% of, of the people in, in, in uh, Germany actually stream TV. Uh, it's a relatively new phenomena, but, you know, there's Canada at 33%. And you can see a lot of the other countries to the right well below that number. If we talk about music, and I, I find this interesting, uh, you know, Latin America, Mexico, and um, uh, Chile have the highest penetration. We're sitting there at, at 30, 36%, sorry, of, of uh, streaming music. And perhaps interesting that just in the last few months, a whole bunch of new services for streaming music come and, and, and expand in Canada. This, the corporation has one, there are others. Um, very interesting. Pursue the opportunity. And then last, that, that category that I talked about called community, where I really do believe some, some of the smaller producers of content can play and be successful. Community video. So videos about home. Videos about gardening. Videos about how to build this. Videos about lifestyle. Videos about uh, beauty. 25% reach in Canada. So a quarter of the, of the people who are online watching video are watching those community videos. Same point, it's fluid. These people are moving back and forth. They start in community, they, entertain, they end up in entertainment. Not quite as dramatic as what you saw with the entertainment numbers, but certainly moving back and forth. So you can cross promote, you can cross pollinate, as I might say. And you should. You should use all the channels. You should use all the tools that you have available to you. All right, a couple of years back, um, changing oars a little bit, we joined with PMB. And for those of you who uh, know PMB, the Print Measurement Bureau is sort of the industry standard in Canada for product usage information. And we wanted to do that, and they wanted to work with us because they wanted to get a greater understanding of product usage and offline behavior. So I've got a couple charts here now looking at online behavior as well as offline behavior at the same time. So let's set this up. So what we're trying to do here, obviously, is link content viewing with offline video viewing. And do these community people actually view community TV content? So are the two things working together? 
So we went into that Fuse database because it not only has product usage, it also has media. And we said, okay, of the percent of community unique visitors that went online, how many actually watched a TV talk show? 35%. A nature show, 34%. An instructional show about home improvement, a third. Cooking, another 29%. So the cross-pollination, the two things work together. These are not static channels. They are meant to be together, and the content goes back and forth, and one can lead to the other. Another example. So what TV content do entertainment online people actually watch? So again, of the entertainment unique visitors, what percentage go and watch movies in the past month? 70%. 70%, almost three quarters. So if you happen to have something digital and you also happen to have product on, offline, these two things can work together. News and current affairs, suspense, crime, drama. Even if we go to the very bottom of the pile, video on demand, which sits at 14%, if we look at it on a composition basis, of the Canadian population, which is the point in the bubble, it's actually 11% over, over index. That it's 11% 11 more than ad, the average Canadian. People who go to entertainment also go and, and require and ask for video on demand. So there's a definite back and forth, a definite effect in offline from online. And then just for fun, and it was funny that the, the subject came up, that Kevin talked about what we all should be training ourselves to be. Um, if we look at YouTube and we look at radio, so the people who go to YouTube, the huge numbers that go to YouTube, where, what are the radio formats that those people listen to? Really traditional offline media. Okay, it starts with album rock, goes down through top 40, modern rock, and you can see the rest of them. All right. So then came this third, and maybe you could say fourth. I'll keep it at three to make it less crazy. 3.5 um, platform. This thing called mobile. And mobile, to us, is not just the smartphone. Obviously, it's the tablet. So I'm going to go through a few charts here now on what we've seen already, and I'm going to move back and forth between American and Canadian data because, quite frankly, we're only just beginning to understand this, and there isn't a whole lot out there and available, but I'm going to show you some of the most current stuff that is available. A recipe site. Okay, pretty straightforward, not super exciting, not high-flying video. 18% of the unique visitors and this is in the U.S., actually went by a mobile device, either a phone or a tablet. That, to me, is pretty phenomenal. That's already, okay? That's just beginning, 18%. And it's a recipe site. Here's the numbers in Canada. And this, I might add, was pre-Christmas. So on the left-hand side, tablets is now at 26% of all mobile sub subscribers have a tablet before Christmas. We'll have some new data in about another mm, 30 days, 1st of April. I will bet you that that number goes over 30. So we can check back with each other and see if it does. Key point, 37% increase in nine months. Nine months, it went up 37% before Christmas. Smartphones, on the other side, 45%. We're now approaching half of people who are mobile subscribers have a smartphone. Again, similar kind of uh, rise in nine months, 36%. Content in the palm of your hand. Now, lest we all, and I certainly don't want you to walk away and go, oh my God, the fear, uh, trepidation, you know, gridlock, we're still talking about a small percentage of the online traffic. So you can see Canada there. Of all the traffic, it's 4.4%. 4.4%. 4 
But I remember standing here a couple years ago saying to you, it's just small, it's just going to grow as it relates to online, it's just going to get better, it's just going to get bigger. That's the point. The point is you don't jump on once it becomes huge, you start to learn while it's still small. So 4%. Singapore is at the top of the pile at just over 7, the UK just under that. And then you can see uh, the mobile traffic inside the non-computer traffic. Because remember that picture at the front. You can access the content from an Xbox, too. That's also in, in the play now, as is an e-reader and, and other things. So if you take that 4.4% and you start breaking it down and say, OK, let me understand this, here's where I think there's some really interesting opportunities and some interesting opportunities to experiment uh, as content producers in Canada. If you look at how it's made up from mobile, tablet, and other, which is e-readers, Xboxes, and other, other devices, look at Canada as it relates to tablet. Okay? This was in the fall. This is, again, pre-Christmas. We have the highest percentage of the number coming from tablet. Again, I know, small numbers, I get that. But what we're looking for here is trends, things that might indicate, number one, that Canada is different, might indicate a way, you, uh, an opportunity to learn. But also the other little light blue box, 13%, which is accessed through Xbox and e-readers, those other devices I talked about, is higher than any other of the countries we measured as well. Other channels, other ways. Are you thinking about that? Are you aware of that as a distribution vehicle? And taking advantage of it. Here's one that shocked me. When we look at mobile media use, and we define that as people browsing the mobile web, downloading, accessing applications, downloading content, it has been increasing across all the markets we measure with our mobile product. Uh, it's really being fueled by, obviously, the smartphone I just showed you a minute ago and the growth, but also 3G, 4G, wireless networks are everywhere, Starbucks, you name it, wherever. You're, there's a wireless network now. We're now approaching 50% of all mobile users in Canada are accessing mobile media, which means they're accessing content, which means they could download that content. So does that make sense for what you're trying to do? Does that fit into your marketing plan? Is that one way you can extend your brand? Is that one way you can extend your message? Uh, certainly that number is going to grow. It's not going to go backwards. Something that's important to understand. Now I'm going to switch back to uh, some US data. And this is specifically relating to the newspaper category. So let me set this up. The blue line, the dark blue line, is tablets. And we're looking at the weekday, morning through to the evening. So the dark blue line is tablet, the light blue line is mobile, and the orange kind of colored line is computer. So in the newspaper category, the day starts out and people access the computer as they do the tablet and, and mobile. Tablet and mobile, pretty similar, more, more, more so on the computer, and access news and information content. And then it's, it sort of hits a peak around noon and then it plunges into the evening. Mobile sort of, sort of mobile device, phone goes up in the morning and kind of stays in the same territory for the rest of the day. But look at the tablet. It goes up in the morning actually bottoms out below everything else, and then in prime time, it goes back up. Interesting. So what is that? Is that multitasking? Is that people accessing content and doing, uh, doing, doing things on, on their tablet that uh, are different than other things that they're doing in the home? Definitely that device in the evening, during the week, at least for the newspaper category, is a way to access that content, perhaps while they're doing other things. They could be watching television. They could be doing a whole bunch of other things. Now switch it to the weekend. So nothing's changed on this chart. I just changed it to the weekend. And you get a whole different looking set of lines. So the tablet now, this convenient device, which you can sit on the couch and have a coffee and kind of take in a moment to reflect, now becomes the main device with this huge peak first thing in the morning. And the others have a little bit of a bump, but 
they all sort of tail off as people get into the busy aspect of, of life and, and making it through their weekend. But the device driven by people's choice and the convenience of what I'm going to do in my life to access the content I want, in this case, just one category, um, very interesting information, very interesting insights on how people use these devices differently. The smartphone is actually making it easier to get content. No kidding. So this is, again, a bit of an eye chart, so I'll try to help you out here. Um, on the extreme left-hand side, access news and information is 80%. Then you've got weather. Then you've got social networking. Great way to connect with my friends through my phone. I don't want to go back to my computer. I'm just going to tell them, hey, did you see this? And, and I'm going to flip it to them. Um, <clears throat> access search, access maps, access news specifically. But equally as importantly, if we come down from the top of the chart to the bottom of the chart, if you look specifically at the percent of smartphone subscribers who listen to music, 42%, uploaded a photo, it seems like everyone's doing that, about a third, upload video, watch TV, 16%. Already, it's 16%. And remember, I showed you a few charts back. It's about 50% of the market now who have mobile devices, which is just about everybody, has a smartphone. So it's already at 16% actually choose to watch it there. All right, a couple charts to finish up. Um, and again, I think a key message I want to leave you with is, as was said uh, at the beginning this morning, the and Kevin said it really well, the old engine hasn't gone. So you need, you know, the sky is not falling here. What we need to all understand is there's opportunity. Personally, I believe adversity brings opportunity. It's all how you bring, what you bring to it. If we look at how often people access news and information by their tablet, and the blue is once in the past month, and then the orange is almost every day. And these are different types of news information. So world, national, local news, 60% of people once in the past month through the tablet. Uh, almost every day is now just approaching 20, 22%, 20 a quarter. Sports content, slightly less. Entertainment, music, financial news, technology news. So when it comes to news and information, you saw it on the last chart. I'll take it this way, whether it be tablet, whether it be smartphone, because I'll take it in the hurried part of my life. I'm going to get the, the, the quick highlights. But as I said, remember that things, the old engine, as Kevin called it, is still really strong. It's all about understanding the new engine. And yes, we are fixing it as we're going. That's the way it goes. We don't get a time or a chance to slow it down. How do you typically view or listen to the following types of media? So the dark blue is watching TV shows and movies. The light blue is streaming music. So again, this is taken from, from the US. So watching, let's start with the, the dark blue. Watching TV shows and movies. 61% of people said, yeah, I watch that on TV. But over a third said they watched it on their desktop. And we're now in the teens for mobile phone and tablet, if we're talking about watching TV shows and movies. If we went back a few years, I guarantee you this chart does not look like this. And that's really the point. It's changing. And yes, it has something to do with lifestyle stage and age and, and device. It has something to do with all of that. But the reality is you must understand there are more channels of distribution now. And how do they work for me and my brand and the message that I'm trying to get out in terms of my product? If we talk about streaming music, TV really not yet a device. Certainly desktop, laptop takes the cake, and then mobile phone and tablet in the same neighborhood of a quarter. How do you typically view or listen to the following types of media when we talk about news and magazines? So news, it's half now on TV. Pretty staggering, only half. On desktop and laptop, also a good sizable number. Some people, still, there's a quarter going to print. 
mobile phone and tablet. You can see it's hitting in around about a quarter or close to a quarter on most of these last couple of charts I just showed you. And then magazines, yeah, some people go online. It's about a third, but people still like the tactile part of a magazine. So it's still 50% of the consumption of magazines is in the form of the magazine. There's something about that. And all of you who subscribe or buy magazines know what that's about. And it kind of ties back to that coffee and the couch and a moment for yourself. But that engine has not gone away. It's still there. But you must understand that. And then mobile phone as it relates to magazines, again, in the teens. So some key things in my mind to take away. The expansion and growth of digital is broadening your canvas. I believe you have the biggest canvas you've ever had. And who knows what's coming next? No one knew that the tablet was coming other than Steve Jobs. Nobody knew that. We certainly didn't know that from a measurement standpoint. So you have a, a canvas now that is bigger than it's ever been. The social and community aspect of the web will expose your content to new audiences. And when I say social in quotes, I'm not just talking about Facebook and, 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 and those social entities. I'm talking about the social aspect of the web is a community. People f like what you have, they will pass it. It will go to others. If it has value, it will be shared. Community and entertainment content is absorbed everywhere. I think there's opportunity in the area of community type content for people who aren't building the mega blockbusters, people who are building other types of content. Obviously, entertainment plays to certain types of organizations. Online video continuing to accelerate. It's continuing to grow. We don't know where the end is here, um, but it just keeps on escalating in terms of people consuming it. And think of it as another screen. There's now four screens, at least, and maybe five if we count the movie theater, and who knows how many more they're going to be. The key is that the new screens are changing content consumption. They are changing how people take content. They're going to take it when they want it, and they're going to take it on the device they want it. That's the other new component. Um, certainly, we know these devices are enhancing the ease of multitasking. Actually, if we think about the, compu the traditional computer, it is traditional now. It's actually old school, which sounds kind of funny. But it is. Traditional computer access is just that, traditional. For some who've not ventured into that area at all, I would encourage you to get going because the world has already changed. Understand your content product. Understand the audiences, and this has been talked about a lot. You have to understand now their channel preferences, online and offline. Do it because it makes sense. And what I mean by that is do whatever you do in terms of your product, in terms of your content, because it makes sense for the target audience, because it makes sense for your product, not because it's the latest shiny thing. We spend an awful lot of time talking to people going, why? Why do you want to do that? Please think it through. As it relates to all these channels we're talking about, please think it through. Why do you want to do that? Why does it make sense for what you're trying to do? And if you can't answer those questions, then turn the idea back to those who are bringing it to you and say, you got you to gotta help me answer that question. Cross-promote and pollinate. You must use all the channels. Uh, I, I still see, whether it be sitting in front of a television or going online, the opportunities are missed to cross-promote back and forth. If you have a really strong online presence and a strong offline presence, use them to develop each other. That's fairly fundamental, but it's still not done across the board. And finally, to close, no one said this was going to be easy. I agree it's challenging. It's challenging for all of us. But I also agree with the comment that we all need to work together. The opportunities abound. And I think that this country has a huge opportunity to be a feeding ground and a testing ground for a lot of the new ideas. And they can be exported. Seize the moment, and at the end of it all, 
have fun. Thanks a lot. <laughs>